American movie is trying to be either The Wizard of Oz or Citizen Kane. No exceptions! I'm just kidding. This is far from a universal rule. WandaVision isn't even a movie. But after years of analyzing filmmakers' agendas and influences, I have found that nearly all prominent American filmmakers, at least the ones trying to tell stories for the broadest American audience, are trying to tell one of two types of stories. I'm going to tell you what those two stories are and how knowing these categories reveals why big studios like Marvel right now are struggling. I'm Eric Voss and this is The Deep Dive, a channel that dives deep into the films we love to, well, I guess today accuse them of being derivative. I swear that's not what I'm trying to do with this video. But if you've been watching my film analyses this year, you may have heard me try to sound smart like this. In my running theory that all American movies are trying to be Citizen Kane or The Wizard of Oz, duh. The dream movie that ends with an implicit there's no place like home and the question over whether it was all a dream or not is totally Wizard of Oz. Iron Man is really Citizen Kane. It's a story of a billionaire who seems to die in the opening minutes and then we spend the rest of the movie unpacking who he really is through the eyes of his business relationships, his lovers, and the press. Barbie is aiming for The Wizard of Oz, both internally in the references of the movie and structurally as a story of a young woman waking up from a dream, but Oppenheimer is aiming for Citizen Kane as almost a documentary point of view assessment of a cryptic American figure as a soul-searching cautionary tale. I owe you all a real explanation of what I really mean by this, because one of my biggest pet peeves is when some sweaty YouTuber draws a tenuous connection between two unrelated movies because they were that guy in their film analysis class, and I recognize that we have never been in more of a media illiterate, everything equals everything era of algorithm-friendly, over-analytical bullshit. So today, I am going to investigate the history of Hollywood and what it means to make an American film and why The Wizard of Oz and Citizen Kane are so important. So today's investigation, are there only two American movies? The evidence, The Wizard of Oz, Victor Fleming's 1939 adaptation of L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, a classic musical fantasy about a Kansas farm girl played by Judy Garland who travels to a Technicolor dream world, murders two witches, and learns that there's no place like home. And because I have to point this out in our opening clip, they actually painted Judy Garland's body double sepia toned to match the set as she opened the door and then swapped in Judy to walk into the colorful set. This movie rocks. Exhibit number two, Citizen Kane, Orson Welles' 1941 morality tale about a newsman who tries to fix America but sells his soul. A thinly veiled hit piece on real life media mogul William Randolph Hearst. And fun tidbit, what is Rosebud? Rosebud was reportedly Hearst's nickname for his mistress's clitoris. But really the harsher insult was putting ironic quotes around the word singer for the character that was based on his actual mistress. You don't hear that on the Hearst Castle tour. Both of these films are classics. They've ranked in the top 10 of the AFI best 100 films ever made, and both of them have won over audiences and film lovers for their timeless themes and the groundbreaking cinema techniques each invented. And I believe that every American film made since the mid 20th century has been constructed in the model of one of these two films. Not so much in their form, because obviously technology and aesthetic styles have evolved over time, but rather in their function, what each of them are hoping to accomplish with their audience. So in a nutshell, Wizard of Oz type movies are fairy tales that transport us out of our lives and invite us to dream. Citizen Kane movies are morality plays that reflect our lives and call us to action. I have to shout out humorist David Rees, who as a guest on the Amazing Blank Check podcast in 2019, discussing the Miyazaki animated masterpiece Spirited Away, comparing it to another amazing Japanese film, Your Name, used this metaphor. I think all interesting movies are either puzzles or dreams. And your name is a puzzle. That's an incredible one. It's and, true. And, uh, oh, and uh, Spirited, Spirited Away is a dream. Now, you could think of Wizard of Oz movies as dreams and Citizen Kane movies as puzzles, but the categories I'm talking about don't align quite as neatly. And it's kind of fun that Reese used the qualifier of interesting movies because I think he would feel that a lot of movies don't really know what they're trying to do. I use the qualifier of American movies in my comparison because I think The Wizard of Oz and Citizen Kane speak to two core myths that are uniquely important to every American. One, the story of the traveler, and two, the story of the disruptor. The story of the traveler is the classic Joseph Campbellian monomyth of a character who goes along a journey, meets people along the way, goes on some quest to achieve what they think they need, realizes what they want is not what they need, pays a price for it, and then circles back home having changed. The story of the disruptor is more of the classic Greek tragedy of a character who thinks they are trying to fix everything in the world, pays a price for it, and reaches some sort of pathos. 
Theros. So let's take that first story, The Wizard of Oz, the story of the traveler. The Wizard of Oz begins as a story set in Kansas in the 1930s, the decade of the Dust Bowl, when many farmers in the United States lost everything and were forced westward. Dorothy travels to a new land and finds herself a fish out of water. And one thing that makes America unique is our status as a nation of immigrants, fleeing religious persecution, seeking economic opportunity, brought here as slaves, escaping famine, seeking some kind of safe haven from war or political unrest. We all come from somewhere. And core to the American identity is the call to adventure, to leave the nest out of restlessness or necessity and to hit the road, either to a new land or just to chase the sunset in a westward expansion. That is the American dream. But the American dream is just that. It's a dream. It's something one wakes up from. And so we inevitably wake up from that illusion and we are left questioning what is real and trusting only the comforts of home. So qualities of Wizard of Oz movies. Stories about restless dreamers who leave their homes to go on an adventure or down a rabbit hole or into a heart of darkness of some kind. The fun in games of the movie show a character reacting to their extraordinary new circumstances and adapting to them. The adventure forces the hero to assemble a diverse team to join them on their quest because the hero alone is inadequate and needs to learn something in his coming of age story. Four, the extraordinary nature of the adventure causes the hero to lose their grip on reality at some point. Then the hero or heroes are driven by a compelling central mystery and awaken to the truth at some point. The audience is meant to feel awe at the spectacle and to leave their lives behind for two hours or so. And when done well, the movie ends by suspending us in a dreamlike state. And here quickly on screen, I'm gonna scroll several examples of what I think are these types of movies. All of these types of movies, to some extent, resemble the experience of having a dream or having a nightmare, something that suspends us from reality, celebrates the diversity of the big wide world outside of our walls, and includes some moments in there that we argue with our friends about that we're not quite sure whether they were real or hallucinations. Okay, that's the first type. Now, working from home doesn't mean working from the couch. When you're ready to upgrade your home office, FlexiDesk is ready to help you dial in your perfect setup. FlexiDesk standing desks have a motor that lets you transition from 28 inches to 47 inches with the press of a button. We've got their Comhar design in our studio and our staff can go from sitting to standing and back to sitting quickly and easily. The four programmable height presets let multiple folks save their preferred height and get back to it with the touch of a button. It's got integrated USB ports to let you have fewer dangling cords and an industrial grade steel frame that can support up to 110 pounds. There's also a convenient pullout drawer for office supplies or snacks. Let's be honest, some snacks are going in there. FlexiDesk's quick install design lets you get up and running in less than five minutes. So all you need to do to have the perfect home office setup is to click the link in the description below and get your FlexiDesk today. The second story type, Citizen Kane, the story of the disruptor. And disruptor, I know, I use this term in the cringy entrepreneur innovator definition that gets deconstructed in movies like Glass Onion, because yes, I agree, disruptors are the worst. Similarly unique to the American DNA is the way our country embraced the industrial revolution and became a nation of workaholism. Now, we're not the only country to be this way now, but we invented it, in my opinion. We disrupted humanity. Sorry about that, Earth. Citizen Kane takes a harsher stance on the American dream. That unchecked ambition corrupts the heart and turns us cold, and that the higher we climb, the further we get from what makes us human. Really, you could argue these stories came from F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, the great American novel, the myth that every great American figure is, to a certain extent, a con artist, a reinvention of his own making. It's really the Wizard of Oz told from the perspective of the man behind the curtain instead of Dorothy. So qualities of Citizen Kane movies. Morality plays about a clever but flawed innovator or entrepreneur or disruptor who achieves great success but gradually erodes to the point of catharsis. These movies tend to be focused on one character as opposed to a group or one central relationship. The central character is an obsessive who feels alienated from their world but turns that obsession into profit, fame, or glory. Short-term success at the expense of long-term happiness or community. These movies are set in worlds that look like our own present or past, and they explore or satirize parts of American society and American institutions. The fun and games of the movie is watching the protagonist transform, succeed, and suffer for that. These stories tend to center around grounded ethical dilemmas that we go through every day of our lives. Gray areas and business relationships, legal matters, interpersonal relationships, and other social constructs. These films are often structured out of sequence, using flashbacks, shifting points of view, and unreliable narrators. And these movies instruct us on how best to live our lives. And I'm gonna run through a bunch of examples of what I consider to be Citizen Kane type movies. All of these types of films 
poems serve as a kind of cautionary tale. They end with the hero dying, or accepting their fate, or realizing their crimes, or just giving up their obsession, and letting that obsession or that relationship go finally. And not all of these types of movies are downers. I include workplace and romantic comedies because they tend to be about idiosyncratic jerks who need to learn how to get over themselves. Now, the reason I am only talking about American films is that directors raised in other countries are trying to work through entirely different cultural experiences. Bong Joon-ho was certainly influenced by American cinema, but his critiques of capitalism in Parasite, Okja, and Snowpiercer are distinctly Korean. Martin McDonough's films defy these categories, as there's something distinctly Irish about In Bruges and The Banshees of Inishirin that doesn't really have to speak to the American experience. Now, there are certainly cross-cultural influences, like Miyazaki's Spirited Away is a Wizard of Oz type story, but it's also so much more than that. Now, I exclude the works of Akira Kurosawa, despite the fact that his 1950 film Rashomon was compared to Citizen Kane and its similarly shifting point of view structure and unreliable narrators, but the thing is, Kurosawa had not seen Citizen Kane, largely due to William Randolph Hearst censoring the film. Many around the world had not seen this movie until RKO sold the TV rights in 1955. So I think it's kind of unfair to include films that came out before Citizen Kane or The Wizard of Oz, like Gone with the Wind or Charlie Chaplin's City Lights. The movie Casablanca came out in 1942, and it's just unlikely that Michael Cutlitz would have seen Citizen Kane before he started shooting Casablanca. Now, Citizen Kane would go on to circulate on American television in the late 50s and early 60s, and that's when film critics started to talk about it being the best film ever made. This would have been right around the time filmmakers like Stanley Kubrick, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, and Brian De Palma were honing their artistic voices as young men. All of these directors, you could say, were taught to dream cinematically by The Wizard of Oz and taught ethics cinematically by Citizen Kane. But yes, of course, there were other huge influences on them, like The Greatest Show on Earth on Steven Spielberg, but these two movies were the movies they all had in common. These two movies gave every generation generation of American filmmakers two clear paths, to transport the viewer or to transform their soul. So where does that leave us when we look at movies today? Franchises like Marvel Studios have been at their best when they lean hard into one direction, one of these two types of stories or the other. WandaVision and Loki were both Wizard of Oz type stories. Guardians Volume 3 was a story of Citizen Rocket, told through flashbacks until he found redemption and left us with strong life lessons about abuse. But Marvel and many big franchises keep trying to have it all, both inward looking character deconstructions that also take us to surreal worlds, like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Totally began as a Wizard of Oz story, but then halfway through shifts into being about Stephen Strange, being an obsessive threat to the multiverse. Shang-Chi started off as a Citizen Kane type story about Shang-Chi and Wen Wu's past with powerful themes about family and abuse and regret, and then it starts talking about alternate dimensions and soul-sucking dragons. I believe Hollywood films are better off setting expectations in a clear way and keep keeping their intentions straightforward so that audiences don't feel this whiplash effect. Barbie, one of the biggest films of 2023, is the story of The Wizard of Oz. Oppenheimer is the story of Citizen Kane. And both of these quirky movies outperformed most of the other movies this year. How did they do this? It's because they connected with American audiences by telling the story of traveling to a new and scary and exciting place, or the story of being really obsessed with something and then regretting it. So are there only two types of movies? No, you can categorize movies however you want to categorize them. But I believe there are two types of stories American audiences will always love to hear again. So in future videos, whenever I talk about this distinction between The Wizard of Oz and Citizen Kane, this is what I'm referring to. This is not a new natural law, free of exception, that every movie has to be run through as a test, but it is the way I look at movies. And I think it could be a helpful way for all of you to consider. Thank you for watching this video. What topic would you like me to investigate next? Subscribe to The Deep Dive and to all channels of the New Rockstars Network. You can follow me at EA Voss, and I will see you next time my divers of the deep because there's no place like the deep dive there's no place like the deep dive